How's it going? So today we're doing a range test on this beast of an electric bike. Let's get going. Alright, with all my range tests I do full power mode, but this bike only has one mode. I don't have the three mode switch installed into the far driver. I could if I wanted to, but no need. So it's already in full power mode. I'll be using this little GPS app here to keep track of uh, miles and speed and all that. So this is a 72 volt bike with a 70 amp hour battery. I bought it, when I bought it, they claimed it was 75 amp hours, but they lied about the power of the bike when I bought it. They said it was 20 kilowatts, but it's actually closer to 12. So when I went in to retune the uh, far driver controller, it said 70 amp hours. That's what the, was listed in the, uh, the controller, so I'm taking that as my source of, truth, source of truth, and I'm calling this a 70 amp hour battery. So 72 volts, 70 amp hours, still a massive battery. I'll put the watt hours on the screen right here. When I got the bike, it was really tuned down. It was not very torquey at all. It was fast, 70 miles an hour, still 75, it's still 70 miles an hour, top speed, but it just didn't take off that well and it just didn't pull. Now it actually feels much better. I increased the uh, phase amps, so it's running 160 line amps. I increased the phase amps to three times that amount. I forget what it is. I think like 480 or something like that. I kept the line amps the same because I don't want to be screwing up my battery. And I think that's right what the battery can take. And then I messed with the throttle settings a little bit. You know, I, I put it in, it was in eco mode, the, the, throttle, the throttle response. And I changed that to sport. I also changed a few other settings. One person told me to change the voltage, which actually made a pretty significant difference in how it feels off the line the voltage of the uh, uh, the throttle in the controller. Yeah, so I pretty much got this thing about as performant as it's going to get. So it does come with a far driver controller that's... Uh, it, it can handle up to 270 amps and 600 phase amps. And the motor is a QS273 2.5T, so it's a low torque, low torque, high top speed motor. So this thing's super fast. In terms of top speed, it's not very torquey off the line, but it does, like I said, it does feel a lot better now than, than when I got it. I was thinking about either, since the motor can take so much more power and the controller is beefed up, the, the limiting factor right now is the battery. If I can get like a, a battery that can run 300 amps continuous or 270 at least I'd be able to max out this controller and phase amps and it'd probably make this thing a lot more torquey or I could just get myself a, uh, a different motor get like the QS205 5 kilowatt you know 5T and run that I priced that out it's like 500 bucks shipped it's kind of pricey you know battery would be like two grand but as it is right now I mean the bike's super fast I mean there's really no reason for me to spend the extra money on it I don't think did do a lot of upgrades Look at the upgrades, the handlebars, the uh, bar mount, I added the mirrors, deleted the display, added the voltmeter there, changed the brakes from those shitty little dual piston things to these four piston deep brakes, added the fenders, and added the, these pedals, no reason to, just because they're red and they match the brakes and want a little bit of bling on it. Let's see what kind of acceleration we get when the light turns green here. Yeah, so it accelerates pretty good. I mean, it's not like my Extreme Bull K6 or anything like that. It's not going to make you scream and laugh, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty good. It'll beat the cars off the line and it'll haul major ass. It accelerates a lot harder once you get going than it does like from, from stop to go. Like right now if I hit it, it just takes off. But everything's like super smooth and progressive though. Like on this bike, it sparks like power and acceleration and everything. It feels like really smooth. Oh yeah, I also got this uh, seat and uh, a number plate just for looks. The seat is way more comfortable. So I'm probably going to film this video over a couple of days because I'm just going out during my lunch time. And this thing is a huge battery. I don't. It's going to take me a long time. Most of my riding is going to be on the road. 
a bike as big as this, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to get away with it on the uh, sidewalks and trails and stuff. So I'm going to stick, keep it to the road. Been going over 40 pretty much the entire ride. Get a good amount of voltage sag when I'm on the acceleration, on the accelerator. Yeah, when I first bought this bike, found out what the real power was, I, I, you know, I messaged them, the company, saying you know, pretty much they lied to me. How they were calculating the, uh, the power was uh, fully charged voltage, so 84 volts. That's not how you do it. You're supposed to use nominal volts, so 72. And they were using the max boost power instead of the uh, max continuous line amps. You're supposed to use use max continuous line amps. Max continuous line amps times voltage. That's how you get your power. And then you to get your uh, battery capacity. It's amp hours times voltage. If any company is doing it any other way, they're being dishonest. They're lying. They're fudging the numbers. So lesson learned. I just have to make sure I get all the specs. I think the battery specs with the max continuous output of the battery. I need to get the uh, controller specs, everything. You guys, make sure you research everything yourself and do these calculations yourself so you know exactly what you're getting. That being said, 12 kilowatts on a bike like this is plenty. This thing is super fast. And I'm expecting to get pretty good range even at these higher speeds, but we'll see. What are we at? 80 volts. So we started at 83.6, now we're down to 80 volts. 80.5 and we've traveled almost seven miles i'm i think 60 volts is empty I, I gotta look it up i'll put it up right here on the screen it's pretty damn windy today i don't know how this audio is gonna turn out a lot of chop love that salt salt water smell another thing i'm thinking about doing since I, I, I really didn't know much about these kind of bikes when I got this, like not, didn't know anything about like the motors and stuff like that. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with controllers and how to tune them and all that kind of stuff, but I've never used one of these, these rear hub motors like this before, just on regular e-bikes. So I'm thinking maybe I'll actually sell this and maybe start over and kind of, I know what I want now and maybe I can just have something custom built. One thing I do appreciate a lot about this bike is just, I already mentioned it, but how controllable the throttle is. It's in full power mode, capable of going 70 miles an hour, but it's you can just putt-putt around. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've seen this sailboat a bunch of times. You've probably seen it deteriorating over time. All right, we're going to head over to our next spot. We are still at 80 volts, 80.1 volts, and we've gone 9.26 miles. So we lost like 3.5 volts. All right, 10 miles, and we are at it's 80 volts even. So 3.6 volts. Per 10 miles so I know I think it's 60 volts so we got between 60 and 84 volts is what 24 volts 24 divided by 3 is 8 8 times 10 is 80 miles obviously I don't know if that's if that's what I'm gonna get or not but just doing some off-the-cuff calculations Looking like maybe 80 miles of range. I'd be happy with 50. <laughs> 80 would be pretty insane. Especially how fast I'm going. I'm just falling ass. Probably slow it down because there are cops around here. This old compound right here to my left is NASA. You know, the Houston, what they call Houston from the space, that's where they're at. That's where the whole training facility and, and everything is. Pretty cool tour, man, if you're ever in Houston. You want to check out NASA, you can see the astronauts train and you know where they invent new robots and stuff like that it's pretty cool all right this road right here is going to be a good test of the suspension because there's all kinds of bumps but it's over the suspension feels pretty good i haven't really need to... usually i need to change out that rear suspension because i'm a heavier guy but seems to be doing well of course i had to like max it out but still it's sufficient for me at 275 pounds the battery does bounce around in there i need to secure it better open it up put Maybe put some styrofoam or something in there to hold it down. All right, here's my second spot. This bike isn't really the greatest off-road, but can manage like a little bit. Just that rear wheel is so heavy because of the motor and then the, the torque isn't all that great. 
This thing is a pure road machine, plain and simple. It's not really meant for going off-road, in my opinion, anyways. Some people do, but they have the torqueier motors, like the 4Ts and 5Ts, 6Ts. This is, like, not torquey at all. But it'll pass any of those bikes up. Those bikes will beat it off the line, obviously, but this will catch up and smoke them. All right, we're 15.48 miles in, and we got 78.7 volts. Oh, it feels nice to stand up on this thing. Adding these riser bars and pull pulling them closer with this surround mount actually made a big difference in the ergonomics. It feels much better like this. So these are just three inch riser bars I got off Amazon. I think in the next video of this bike, I'm gonna go through and go over all the upgrades and what I paid for everything and just do kind of a full price breakdown for you. And I'll put links to everything in the description and all that. In the last range video I did, if you guys watched it, for the, uh, the Geofot G13 or G14 scooter, I hit this right here, this little bump, and it just destroyed my fenders. <laughs> my front and rear fenders just shattered. Luckily, I showed them the video, and they're sending me new ones out for free. But, yeah. I'm actually really digging this bike, you know, because I'm not like a stunter, you know, so there's no re real reason for me to have like a Suron or anything like that, because I'm not doing wheelies. I'm not really going off-road that much I do a little bit of off-road stuff but it's just like you know trails nothing crazy I'm not jumping or anything so this kind of thing is actually perfect for me just I wish I would have known more about the, the the motors and I would have got like maybe a 4t maybe a 3.5 I'm not sure probably a 4 because I really like acceleration but like I said maybe I'll sell this and just build a new one or have it custom built for me in China and shipped yeah, and when you custom build them, some companies will give you everything you want, you know? So, like, if I did a new build, you know, you know what? I think I am going to do that. That sounds like fun. I'm going to sell this thing, and then with the money from this, I'm just going to get another one. But I'm going to have, like, fast ace forks probably on the front. Maybe do a better DNM shock um, with a 550-pound spring. Same, same uh, wheels and tires, so I like the 19-inch with these little turtle tiles, little dual sport tires but I'm gonna do a um, same controller to the far driver with the 270 amp and uh, but I'm gonna do a high output battery for sure you know what I might even go with uh yeah you know what well, you know what I'll do is I'll do a um, just a really large um, high output battery but at 96 volts so at 96 volts you kind of have the best of both worlds. You can have that torque from like a 4T or 5T motor, and because you have the higher voltage, you can get a higher top speed than with the 72 volts. So, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll, if I'm gonna do a high voltage, high power battery, and I'll run it at 270 amps, 660 phase amps. I don't know, guys. Should I go with the QS273? 4T or the QS205 4T. I know the QS273 handles heat better and uh, it's more efficient, I think. The 205 is cheaper and it's lighter. It's a lot lighter, I think, than the, I think 20 something pounds lighter than the QS273. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. But yeah, that would be one hell of a build, wouldn't it? Like, just get something close to, well, at 96 volts, it wouldn't be 270 amps. So I don't know exactly what it would be. But something right around 20 kilowatts, which is what I thought this bike was when I first got it. Yeah, yeah. So when I, I will list this for sale, I think, after the next video. Just gonna chill in the middle of the road, huh? Okay. I mean, you can pull up right here. There's plenty of, sp all right. Yeah, then, you know, no one's buying anything right now. It's really hard to sell stuff right now. So I'd pro to to build something like that, I'd probably need to sell this for like, 4500 I mean this bike if you buy it retail I mean with all the upgrades and everything they probably try to sell it to you for like six grand or something like that but yeah I'll try to get 4500 out of it maybe and then I can use probably 4000 of that just to buy it have a manufacturer just custom build me something pretty crazy uh, from China and have it ship it over and have it shipped over yeah and then I'll choose I'll choose my brakes I'll choose my grips my throttle my my forks, battery, everything. I'll just just really kind of pimp it out. And I should be able to get out the door for less than 4000 
I mean, I might just even use the same company just because they're cheap, but really hold their feet to the fire on what I'm getting. <laughs> you know, be very specific about what I want. I mean, I've been going like over 40 the entire time. Uh, when I get off back at home, I'll check the uh, average speed. But uh, we're just about to hit 20 miles and I haven't even used a third of the battery yet. So it's going to get at least 60 miles. Yeah, I just hit 20 and I still have, let's see, 76.8 volts. So it hasn't even gone down a third. All right, I'm back home. Let's see what we got here. So we got 22.44 miles and we're at 76.4 volts. So we got, we've got a while before we even get to a third of the battery. And let's see here, let's see what information we got. So my maximum speed was 56 miles an hour and average speed was 26 miles an hour. And that's because I stopped at some parks and was going slow, but you saw most of my road riding was 40 plus. So I'm not gonna bore you with like the rest of it. I'm gonna go out tonight and tomorrow as long as it takes to uh, get the battery down and then we'll just cut back in with the results. All right, just got back from another ride. I did an additional 20, 0.63 miles top speed was 57 and average was 24 miles an hour and we are at 69.1 volts so what does that put us at about 43 miles with a little over half used so we're looks like we're going to end up in the between 75 80 miles but we'll see what's up guys so it's actually been a few weeks since I recorded the range test and uh, I ended up doing a third ride but for the life of me I cannot find the footage of that so the third ride took me down to I think right around 63 volts and I put a tad over 25 miles on it in that ride and then it got kind of spooked because I was losing power and I didn't want to mess up my battery so I just called it there I don't feel like pulling the bike out look at, look at all these stupid bikes I have this isn't even all of them. I got, what, three more inside, inside the house. But yeah, pretty crazy. Anyways, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I did just a tad over 25 miles. So I'll put the uh, total right up here on the screen. Actually pretty damn good for a 70 amp hour battery. I'm 275 pounds. So if you weigh less than me, you're gonna get a lot better range than that. And uh, anyways, thanks for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.